Welcome to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show. We've got a different guest for you every week. Somebody pretty cool in the community, and I'm really excited about today's guest, Warren Seitz, who, uh, head football coach at Versailles, just finished your first year at uh, Versailles. And the first time uh, we were getting ready to do a uh, Versailles Tigers game, and I see the name of their new head coach, and I think, I've seen that name before. Where do I know that name from? And, you know, go look it up. And former Mizzou quarterback Warren Sites, right? Yeah, I've been around for a while. So uh, <laughs> hard telling where you saw that name. But, yeah, I played for University of Missouri in the early 80s, uh, four years for Warren Powers, mm -hmm. uh, actually, and one year for Woody Woodenhofer. And uh, had a great experience. You know, didn't win as many games we won or play as much as I won to. But that, that happens in athletics. And, uh but good to be back to mid-Missouri. Yeah, absolutely. Good to have you back, too, uh, because we noticed just a huge difference in the quality of the football program when you took over uh, coaching. So says a lot. And we'll get into your coaching here momentarily. But you're actually not a Missouri guy, right? You're a Kansas guy. No, I am a Kansas guy, but uh, actually both my parents are from Missouri. Okay. <clears throat> so my dad was from uh, uh, Wellington, Missouri, okay. and my mom Blackburn, and so we spent a lot of time Concordia, Waverly, up in that area. Uh -huh. uh, so we're back and forth. My dad worked for Goodyear in Kansas City, and then got transferred to Topeka, Kansas. Okay. So that's how we ended up uh, in Jayhawk land, although never Jayhawks. <laughs> You're not going to claim that. No, right? never. Uh, so, <laughs> it, and you said you'd grew up in Topeka, went to high school there, and you were a sports star there. I think you still hold some uh, track records there, right? Yeah, I was on. I was lucky enough to be on uh, some track teams, which I I didn't enjoy the 400, yeah. but was pretty good in the 400. So we teamed up in uh, the the mile. It was called the mile relay, 1600 yeah. meter relay. Uh, won the state, uh, Kansas Relays, had a lot of success, so had a lot of guys with me that could run also. Yeah, well, and you must have been a pretty good football player because uh, you got recruited to Missouri, <clears throat> right? Right. My senior year, I had actually gotten hurt uh, a couple times, and so the year before my senior year, I'd went to different camps, Missouri included, because I liked them, KUK State, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had some size and speed, and you know, uh, coaches like that. Yeah. And so, it, you know, I had a great uh, experience being recruited, went out to UCLA on a trip. Nice. Uh, some stuff like that. So, really enjoyed that experience. But ultimately, uh, I was a tiger at heart and ended up at MU. How does that recruiting, because, you know, most of us don't have the talent to be recruited, you know, in anything. So the coaches come in and they like sweet talk you and sweet talk <laughs> your parents. Is, is that kind of the way that goes? That is kind of the way it goes. Yeah. And uh, then you take the trips and, uh, you know, just see. And I really looked at other other people, uh, you know, as far as playing quarterback at Mizzou, who was there, who they had. Uh, things like that. Phil Bradley was right before me, who was an awesome quarterback yeah. uh, for the Tigers and was just about ready to graduate. But also for me, location from where I grew up in uh, Columbia is about three hours or less than three hours from Topeka. So I knew my parents could come see me. So there were things that uh, played into that also. But yeah, they try to sweet talk you and uh, some of the coaches uh, wear you out with it yeah. almost. And anymore, I'm sure some of the players get wore out with recruiting. Oh, I'm sure. it's. Uh, but that's in college uh, sports, that's huge. I mean, you got to recruit the players. I remember talking with Barry Switzer, and he's like, we were beating Texas by 50 at halftime, so I called up. Billy Sims and said, hey, you know, you need to come play for us, you know. So, I mean, that, that recruiting never stops. It's all about the Jimmys and Joes, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as football coaches concerned or any, any sports, really. If you've got the players, it gives yourself a chance. You know, then coaching, you add that mix of coaching in there. And that's how you can become a successful program. Right. So, and and you mentioned your years there at Mizzou. You were the quarterback uh, early to mid '80s, mm -hmm. I think, right? Yes. Had, had some success uh, your sophomore year. I think you went to the Holiday Bowl, uh -huh. and you won that. I think, right? Well, we went to the we we played in the Tangerine Bowl my freshman redshirt freshman year against yeah. Southern Mississippi, and we won that. Uh, and then uh, we went to the Tangerine Bowl. And we lost that to Steve Young. Uh, Steve Young was BYU. at BYU. Yeah. 
and uh, we had it one, and uh, they threw this little throwback to the quarterback yeah. over a guy named Bobby Bell, whose dad played for the Chiefs, Bobby yeah. Bell Sr., yep. but Bobby Bell Jr. played for us uh, just over his head, and Steve Young actually caught the winning touchdown, so we did not win that, oh. but uh, it was a great experience playing in San Diego and everything that with that. With that. Was that the year Steve Young and BYU won the national championship? No, it was not the year. I think that uh, our year we played them was 83, um, but I, I'm not for sure. I would have okay. to check that. Interesting. Not okay. that I remember that they won the national championship. It makes a better story, though. It does. Absolutely. We need to look into that. That's cool, though, that you got to play against a Hall of Famer like Steve yes. Young and yeah. stuff like that in college. And then... Uh, as usually happens in uh, football, after college, you think about turning pro, and you were good enough that uh, you went to the NFL. So we're going to talk more about that when we come back with Warren Sites here on the Community Spotlight Show. Your time on the water is limited, and High V and Osage Beach knows it. Let us do the shopping so you can maximize your lake time. With our Isles Online app, you can have your groceries delivered or ready for contactless pickup when you arrive to the lake. With all your grilling favorites, snacks, fresh produce, and home to the lake's largest wine, spirits, and beer department, your weekend at the lake starts with High V and Osage Beach, where you'll find a helpful smile in every aisle. It's our most protective wash yet. Introducing the Quick Car Ceramic Wash. It's an industrial grade polymer solution with ceramic nanotechnology, resulting in high end, advanced scientific protection of your vehicle's finish. The Quick Car Ceramic Wash. Try it on its own or with the monthly unlimited wash club today. Quick Car. Quick, easy, and professional every time. In Jefferson City and Osage Beach. Welcome back to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show, brought to you by the fantastic folks at High V, both in Osage Beach and Jefferson City. Uh, we're just having some fun uh, talking with Warren Seitz. He is the coach, football coach at Versailles Tigers, uh, took over this year and uh, uh, and has a great history. Played quarterback at Mizzou, went to some bowl games, and that's where we kind of left off uh, uh, before the break here. So. After college, after mm -hmm. a fairly successful career there at Mizzou, you're good enough to uh, get drafted into the NFL. How did that work? Well, you know, my years at Missouri, uh, you know, we had a two-quarterback system at that time. A guy named Marlon Adler, who was also from Kansas, mm -hmm. uh, came in the same time I did. So we traded back and forth. And actually, my senior year at Missouri, uh, it seemed like uh, one of us was starting – uh, if he got hurt, I'd go in at quarterback. I played some receiver also as, as a senior. But again, that size and that speed, and I went to the NFL Combine down in New Orleans and had a really good combine uh, down there and then got drafted by the Steelers. Uh, and even though I'd played uh, quarterback and, and wide receiver at Mizzou, they drafted me as a tight end. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they'd also tra drafted a guy named Brent Jones, and this is an awesome story because uh, Brent Jones then, they ultimately released for me, then went to the 49ers and actually won a Super Bowl. Yeah. And so that might be my claim to fame in the NFL was I beat out Brent Jones at tight end for the Steelers uh, our rookie year, but uh, had never blocked. Uh, before so you know that was the big thing for me was learning how to block as a tight end but played on all the special teams ultimately the second year they moved me out to receiver um, with my athletic ability uh, Lewis Lips and John Stallworth were out there wow, and so there's, there's a lot names. of competition there yeah yeah uh, Donnie Shell played uh, Mike Webster was on the team so that was kind of the end of the Steelers' run. There was still some uh, mean Joe Green was defensive line coach, Tony Dungy, defensive back coach, yeah. all for Chuck Knoll. So that was kind of the end of their reign, maybe, and, and maybe some of those players and coaches uh, as it had to do with the Steelers. But, uh, again, it was an awesome experience. Uh, I was married at the time, and Tracy and I lived in, in Pittsburgh, and uh, – just had, just had a great time there. Absolutely. And you talk about Chuck Knoll. Here's a Hall of Fame coach, mm -hmm. right, that you go in. He'd won four Super Bowls with guys like Brad Shaw and Franco Harris and yeah. that whole bunch. Uh, and so what kind of a guy was Chuck Knoll, and did you learn 
a lot of coaching from him. Uh, I did, and you know, I'd like to say that I took a lot away from uh, all of my coaches, including my high school coach, and and the motivation that that he had to be able to motivate his players, and and Warren Powers or Jim Donnan, who was ultimately the our offensive coordinator at Mizzou, who ultimately went to uh, Oklahoma's offensive coordinator, and then was the head coach at Georgia, uh, and then Chuck Knoll. Um, you know, he was he was more the obviously being the head coach. You don't get into the grind a lot as yeah. the assistants do, and in, in teaching them up. But uh, there was one story I remember about Chuck Knoll, and everybody had great respect for him. And we were in Seattle for about I think it might have been the first game of the regular season, and we were doing kickoff, and and he was trying to get into it, and he started backpedaling. Uh, and he fell down. <laughs> and you would think that most people would laugh, but it was Chuck Knoll who fell down, and nobody laughed at all. You know, they just, yeah, they knew better at that point in time. So uh, so he got on, up, and we went on with our pregame. But, uh, yeah, he, he was an awesome coach, yeah. obviously. Obviously, yeah, because, uh, I mean, that was a losing program, I think, when he came in and took it over, and Steelers winning four Super Bowls. And then, as your NFL career progressed, you got to play for another Hall of Fame coach in Bill Parcells. I did. I, w I went up to Canada for a little bit uh, and came back uh, during the strike year and played for the New York Giants and Bill Parcells. Uh, the biggest thing I take away from that would probably was uh, Lawrence Taylor crossed, Ooh, yeah. you know, at that point in time. And, and Lawrence Taylor uh, against some of the guys that weren't uh, NFL caliber players, you know, ripped it up for two or three weeks. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had a short stint with, with the Giants and, and Coach Parcells. And, um, you know, I've been blessed throughout my career with a lot of great coaches. Yeah. Uh, and great football uh, memories and experiences. Absolutely. Well, and you took that, uh, and then you get into coaching yourself. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of success, high school coach in Kansas, and uh, and I'm guessing you learned a lot of that from your coaches all along the way. I really did, and I went back to my alma mater, Topeka West High School, uh, you know, and was an assistant there for four years under the coach that had coached me, Frank Walton. Uh, and then I got the head job and was there for 15 years. Um, we decided to leave Topeka and we went to Moberly, mm -hmm. uh, Missouri, where I was a baseball coach there. Ultimately decided to get back into football coaching because I love the X's and O's. I yeah. love the game, uh, the discipline that, that comes with it, uh, putting kids in, into positions to be successful and seeing them grow. <clears throat> so I ultimately went back to at Nemo Hall Central in Seneca, Kansas, and was the head football coach and AD, and we had a ton of success there. Yeah. Uh, it was a smaller school, smaller than what I'd ever been in, uh, but uh, 60 miles north of Topeka, where my parents were still at that point in time, and my wife's parents. So uh, had a blast in, in Seneca and won a state championship just two years ago in 2019 with a couple other Final Four finishes. Um, and really built up that program um, and, and really enjoyed our time there. What would be a highlight? I mean, if you look back, winning the state championship has to be way up there. Uh, going to the Holiday Bowl or bowl games with Mizzou, going to the NFL, what is like your, the biggest highlight that you, you think back on and is just like, that was the greatest? Well, it might have been a preseason game uh, with the Steelers in that the uh, Bears were coming off of the Super Bowl. Yeah. I think they had won it in 85 and it was 86, or it was they won it in 86 and it was 87. Right. And it was my first game in preseason. And I was standing on the sideline just in awe of the Bears, you know, not uh, with Refrigerator Perry and Richard yeah. Dent, uh, you know, and, and Sweetness. Uh, at the running back, uh, Walter Payton. And so I was just in awe. And I got into the game in the fourth quarter, and it had a good special te uh, teams game and caught a touchdown uh, at the end. Uh, from the actu Actually started out at running back um, and then before they moved me to tight end. But uh, from the running back position, got a touchdown. Um, you know, went to uh, stay in a hotel because my sister had came down. Uh, got our car stolen that night, was the player of the game for catching this touchdown against the defending Super Bowl champs, 
But uh, ultimately what happened was when I caught the touchdown out of the backfield, I'd blown my cover, uh, I'd blown my assignment. I was supposed to be picking up a blitzing linebacker. So he had to throw it to me because I blew it, but then nobody knows that. But I caught a touchdown and was like the player of the game. And uh, that was an awesome experience for me. And, mm -hmm. and one I will always remember and then get my car stolen that night. Having to go tell Chuck Knoll a couple days later that they found my car. So went, uh, went back into Pittsburgh and got it um, from the, the dump, basically, because they kind of destroyed it. Mm. But... Uh, that was probably one of the highlights of my career. You know, a long career it's been in coaching and playing, but that was awesome. Amazing, man. Well, you're awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming down and sharing your stories with us today. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it.